So the Arctic Ocean uh, remains uh, quite an unknown uh, area just because we don't have enough data in general. One, the key questions we ask for the Arctic is um, how the uh, circulation um, are even in the Arctic Ocean, how um, uh, certain water mass form and how long it takes and uh, what effects uh, will uh, now the warming has on both the circulation, the sea ice formation, the uh, sea ice movements, and the impact of ice melting on the, um, on the circulation near the surface as well as at depth. So, so my current research entails uh, obtaining the best solution for the Arctic Ocean using the, uh, a combination of um, uh, computer modelings, very serious, I must admit, and uh, uh, um, uh, using data and um, the inverse method, the adjoint method, to try to combine them both to obtain a best picture of the hydrography of the circulation of the Arctic Ocean. The uh, part that I am studying is in the Western Ar uh, Arctic. So just a very quick map on the left uh, is the, entire, the map of the entire Arctic Ocean uh, with Greenland, Canada, Alaska, Russia uh, highlight. And then there's a zoom in to the right panel where uh, you see um, the Chukchi Sea. So that's particularly the area where the, uh, dense, the water, uh, the source water of this halocline will form at least in this uh, research study. And uh, below, uh, I just show a profile of um, temperature and salinity as a function of depth for the typical uh, water mass you see in the Western Arctic. So particularly, you focus on the letter C, uh, and that's where the temperature is near freezing, and that's the part uh, where we call the halocline. And um, correspondingly, if you look over to the salinity profile where the label is red, uh, that's where you see the uh, salinity is increasing quickly, so that uh, entire uh, region is considered uh, the upper halocline in the Western Arctic. So um, this is a figure that shows actually an observation from uh, Bob Pickard uh, at Woods Hole, where uh, they went out in the um, in the um, uh, coast along the coast of Alaska and measure the interior uh, water mass. Uh, next to uh, the Barrow Canyon. And uh, so the picture to the left shows the location of their ex uh, expedition with Alaska labeled there and the uh, little box shows uh, where the um, uh, expedition took place. And uh, within that box, there's a, um, a very narrow canyon called Barrow Canyon. And that's what you see in the middle panel as well as the, uh, the right, um, on the right side is uh, next to the coast of Alaska. And the water mass that you see in magenta is the particular cold and, say, uh, and uh, dense and saline water that we wanted to study. In. So in addition to uh, looking at the dense water formation, we also wanted to understand how the water is transported from uh, the, sh uh, the shallow water. So the dense water is formed uh, during a sea ice formation. When ice forms, salt is rejected into the ocean and because uh, you, once you increase salt, then the water becomes very dense. So it has a tendency to sink to the bottom of the very shallow shelf. But from the bottom of the shelf all the way into the Arctic interior, there are many uh, possible ways uh, it can get transformed. And there had been um, already theoretical studies in the past to try to understand how it's formed. So for example, here there's a study from Chapman and Gavakiewicz in 1995, where they show in succession from the top to the bottom, uh, from day 6, 12, 18 to 24, how you first get this dense water form, sinks, and what happens. So in that particular case, they show that eddies due to instabilities both from frictional along the wall and along the bottom is the mechanism for actually extracting this dense water slowly off the shelf and into the interior. And one of our key goals in this, in our, in this study was also to see if this is also observed in, um, uh, uh, is also seen uh, in the model. Uh, 
Uh, at least from our four kilometer resolution um, paper, we concluded that we did not see this kind of eddies form, forming on the shelves. And uh, so what I show here is um, a, uh, uh, in the upper panel, the a figure from the paper that shows on the left um, a bigger map along the coast of Alaska and a zoom in of uh, small eddies for February 25th 28th, March 3rd, 9th, and 15th to show that we actually do see eddies, uh, but they are very rarely seen and they are quickly uh, deformed and got advected mainly by the, um, by the main current, which is a very strong current along the coast. And um, this result is actually uh, in agreement with yet another study where the workers particularly went into the, uh, this part of the ocean to try to see if they can also observe the eddies predicted by the previous workers. And they also found that if you have a fast current, background current, then that current can actually prevent the eddies from forming within the um, time scale. And as a result, most of the water can get affected mainly by the current and not by um, eddies. Uh, lastly, we found, um, so on the shelf, from the shelf into the interior, as I mentioned, then mainly we, we found that it's the current that affected the water down. Once it comes off the slope, then it will get channeled into these uh, narrow canyons, uh, barrel canyons, as I mentioned before, and several, a uh, couple of other canyons, Central and Harrow. And what we see in the paper is that once it comes out of the canyon, so actually if you see here, uh, look at figure A, uh, sub-figure A, where I had already labeled Barrow Canyon, then you see that once the water comes down the slope, then you can actually see eddies uh, off the slope. And so from the point coming off the slope into the interior of the Arctic, here we can clearly see that eddies are the main mechanism for moving this dense and cold water into the interior to the main part of the halocline. So that's also part of our, the conclusion of our paper that um, eddies brings about eight, uh, 60 to 90 percent of the uh, cold water into the interior. And uh, one last thing about um, this, um, based on the amount of dense water we calculated and the time it takes, uh, we estimate that it takes about 10 to 20 years uh, on time scale to uh, ventilate this halocline layer uh, of about 200 meters or so, residing between 50 to 200 meters in the Western Arctic. What is left to do? Um, one of the uh, key things was uh, still whether uh, eddies are, are possible on the um, uh, on the shelves to transfer the dense water in and there had been a lot of arguments that the model at four kilo kilometer resolution is still not good enough to resolve the eddies. So there had been suggestions uh, among other uh, motivations to actually even run the model at higher resolution, two kilometers perhaps, to really see if this uh, conclusion is true that it's mainly advection coming off the, uh, the uh, coast. Um, that was the main mechanism. But on a bigger picture, uh, it's also the question of whether the warming uh, can affect the ice uh, pattern um, in this area and whether that can also affect the amount of the source of the halocline or whether the, lay uh, the thickness of the halocline will uh, change in uh, various uh, ways. The, uh, yeah, depending on the warming. So there's still a lot of open questions, but uh, at the moment we are still trying to f focus on the, um, on the um, fundamental questions really of how the water forms and if we can really have a good understanding of how it's formed and how it's transported, then we can address a lot of these other, um, these additional questions regarding what happened once you change the climate, uh, the uh, weather pattern, the wind pattern, etc. how th that will in the long run affect the uh, the health of the halocline and thus, in fact, the, uh, the water mass distribution in the Western Arctic and the Arctic in, gen uh, in entirety.